Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning and AI Tutorials. We are continuing the series of tutorials on DeepSeek. In this particular tutorial, we explain how to install DeepSeek R1 model locally on Windows and how to write a Python code that will run DeepSeek R1. And in our previous tutorial, whose link will be provided in the description below, we explained how to run DeepSeek R1 on a Linux Ubuntu machine and in Python. For those of you who are not familiar with DeepSeek, DeepSeek belongs to the class of reasoning models. So what are the reasoning models? Reasoning models perform better at complex re reasoning problems and tasks compared to the classical large language models, such as, for example, LAMA 3.1. Complex reasoning problems are problems that appear in mathematics, science, and coding. According to the information given on the GitHub page of DeepSeek, the performance of DeepSeek R1 is comparable to the performance of OpenAI O1, and this is really, really important. On the other hand, DeepSeek R1 is released under the MIT license, which means that you can also use this model in a commercial setting. This graph shows the performance of DeepSeq R1 model. These rectangles with the blue hatch represent the performance of DeepSeq R1. On the y-axis you can see accuracy in percentiles. And over here you can see different test cases. On the other hand, these gray rectangles, this one, this one, this one, this one, represent the performance of OpenAI O1. And you can see that the performance is almost similar. You can also see here this, these rectangles with light blue color, and they represent the performance of a distilled DeepSeq R1 model. Distilled models are smaller models, that is, model order reduction is performed and you can see that the performance is not bad. Note over here that DeepSeq R1 distilled model only has 32 billion parameters. And over here you can see OpenAI O1 Mini, these light rectangles, that is these gray light rectangles represent the performance of OpenAI O Mini and these super light rectangles, that is this one, this one, this one, etc., represent the performance of DeepSeq model, V3. So what are the distilled models? To run the full DeepSeq R1 model locally, you need more than 400 gigabytes of disk space and a significant amount of CPU, GPU, and RAM resources. And this might be prohibitive on the consumer level hardware. And for us, who cannot afford a computer that costs, for example, $100,000. However, DeepSeq has shown that it's possible to reduce the size of the original DeepSeq R1 model and at the same time preserve the performance. Of course, the performance is not preserved completely as the previous graph shows. Consequently, DeepSeq has released a number of compressed or distilled models whose size varies from 1.5 to 70B parameters. To install these models, you will need from 1 to 40 gigabyte of disk space. And consequently, in this tutorial, we will explain how to install and run distilled models of DeepSeq R1, whose performance is very similar to performance of the full DeepSeq R1 model. Our computer has the following specification. We have NVIDIA 3090 GPU with 24GB VRAM, 64GB of regular RAM, Intel i9 processor, processor with this number, 10850K, which has 10 cores and 20 logical processors, and we are running the model on Windows 11. It's not actually Linux Ubuntu, it's Windows 11. Okay, let's start with explanation. The first step is to download and install OLAMA. OLAMA is a very useful framework for running large language models locally. In this video tutorial, we are going to use OLAMA to download the remote repository of DeepSeq R1. After we download DeepSeq R1, we are going to create a Python virtual environment and then we are going to install 
Olama library inside of this Python virtual environment. And finally, we are going to write a Python script that will execute the model by using the Olama Python API. So let's start. To download and install Olama, go to the official Olama website, then click over here on download and click on your operating system, in our case Windows, and click on download for Windows. And over here, you can download the file, store it in the downloads folder and click on save. Now Olama will be downloaded. While Olama is downloading, I can say a few things about Olama. You can execute models by using Olama by using a single code line as you will see later on. Okay, next let's go to the downloads folder and over here start Olama. Here it is. Click on install and now Olama will be installed. This might take even, I think, up to a minute to complete. After Olama is installed, let's verify the installation. First of all, click here and you should see this cute icon representing Olama. If you see this icon, this means that Olama is running in the background. However, the best check is to try to call the Olama executable. Consequently, click here and search for command prompt. And start the command prompt and in the command prompt type Olama. And if you see this response, this means that Olama is installed on your system and we can proceed further. The next step is to download the model. Consequently, go back to the Olama website. Then over here, search for deep seek dash r1 and click on this link and you will be directed to this website. Let me explain what's written over here. This is the Olama web page of DeepSeq R1. If you click here, you can see a number of distilled models. You can see a small model that which has only 1.5 billion parameter and to download this model you will need 1.1 gigabyte of space on your disk. And if you increase the number of parameters, for example, this model, this model, or this model, you can see that the size of the model increases. Consequently, if you want to download and install this model, you will need 9 gigabytes of disk space. In this video tutorial, I'm going to select this model. So click here and you can see that this is a quantized model and over here, a command for running and installing the model is automatically generated. Now, copy this command by clicking here, go to the command prompt, paste it, but don't execute it. Change here, run to pool. So what I'm doing over here, I just want to download the model and consequently I just wrote pool. The previous command with run will download and execute the model immediately. So let's just download, press enter. And now it's going to take even maybe two to five minutes to download the model. And keep in mind over here that you're downloading almost 10 gigabytes. Consequently, be patient. And after approximately several minutes, the model is downloaded. Next, let's type Olama list to verify that the model exists on our system. And let's test the model. To test the model, you simply need to type Olama run and then you need to copy and paste the name of the model and press enter and the model should start. Now in this tutorial we are not going to use command line to run the model here we are just running the model from command line to perform tests. So let's wait until the model is loaded at the same time you can start task manager and over here you can look at the performance you can look basically at the GPU, CPU usage. So for example, if you click here, you can see GPU usage. A good thing over here to observe is that memory is being consumed. So let's ask a question, who are you? And you can see immediately response over here. Good. Next exit from the model, you can either type by or press control D and you will exit the model. The next step is to create a Python virtual environment such that we can install everything. Oops, I made an error here. Let me do it like this. 
And to do that, first of all, go to the D drive by typing this, or sorry, C drive, and create a test folder. Let's call it test deep. Then let's navigate to this test deep folder. And inside of this folder, we need to create a Python virtual environment. However, you need to verify that you have Python on your system. To do that, you need to type Python dash dash version and you should see your current Python version. You can see that currently Python 3.12 is installed on my system and we can continue further. The next step is to create the Python virtual environment. To do that, we need to execute a set of commands. First of all, we need to execute this command over here. This will create a Python virtual environment and after this command, we need to activate the Python virtual environment. To activate the Python virtual environment, we need to type this. And here it is. You know now that the Python virtual environment is activated since over here you, should, you see an env1. The next step is to install olama library. To do that, simply use pip and type pip install olama. Olama package or olama set of libraries will enable us to run Olama and the model from a Python script. And the final step is to write the Python code that will run the model. To do that, start your favorite Python editor. In my, say, in my case, it's Visual Studio Code. By typing this, let's create a new file, file, new file, and let's call it test.py. And let's save it in the workspace folder. And over here, let me zoom in such that you can see what I'm typing. Here is the Python file that will run the model. So let's explain this file line by line. First of all, we need to import Olama. Then we need to specify the model name. Here I specify the model name. If you're not sure about the model name or if you used any other model that you just downloaded, let's type Olama list to see all the models. Then simply copy this model name go here, paste the model name, and that's it. Okay, so here's the question, how to solve a quadratic equation, and you can ask any other question over here. Then we call Olama chat, we specify the model name, and we specify the dictionary over here inside of this list. Our role is user, the content is question to ask, that is you need to pass the string that poses the question, and then the response will be stored in this data structure response. To extract this response, you need to get message content and the response will be stored in this string called response or llama response. Then I will print it over here on the computer screen and over here I will save the response in a text file. I'm simply using vidopen. Vidopen enables you to open files without worrying about closing them. That is, when this line executes over here, the file will be automatically closed or when the program executes. So I'm calling the name alputolama.txt. I'm opening the file in the write mode. I'm specifying the encoding and I'm simply writing the response in a text file. That is, once this code is executed, the response will be stored in this text file. So let's save this and let's run the code. To run the code, we need to do the following. First of all, press and hold Control Shift P and search for Python select interpreter. Here it is. Here, select the Python interpreter inside of your virtual environment such that you can see the Olama library and then run the code by simply pressing here and here it is. The code will be executed. Now, here you need to be patient since it's going to take a while to complete everything. At the same time, you can open up here the task manager to observe what's happening. You can see the GPU is being used for some time and response is being generated. And you can see the response over here Let's see what's written. I need to solve the quadratic equation and then you can see the procedure, how the quadratic equation is solved, etc. And at the end, you can see the final answer. Let's now verify that the file with the response exists. Click here, then click on PC. Let me go on desktop. Let me go here. Actually not here, it's actually on C drive, right? 
C drive here and here's the text and that's it. So model works like a charm. Note over here that I'm running 14 gigabyte or actually 14 billion parameter model which has around 10 gigabytes and consequently you can see the memory consumption over here. It's almost half of my memory. Okay, at least on a GPU and GPU has 24 gigabyte of memory. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons and see you in the next video tutorial.